Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In my last video, I talked about four control line tips that are extremely critical to ensure you get quality local adjustments from Photolab 7. In this video, we're going to be continuing our series on local masking, this time talking about not four, not five, but six control point tips which are just as useful to make sure you get perfect local adjustments. So let's get right into it. Tip number one is to use multiple control points. While the control line is a linear gradient, the control point works more like a radial gradient. To use it, just click and size a circle over the target area. Unfortunately though, because of the shape of the control point, which is limited to a circle, the mask spills over the edges of the irregularly shaped boat, reducing contrast and producing a subpar edit. One solution to this issue is to not use just one big circle to mask an area. You might get a better fitting mask with multiple control points. DxO does a great job ensuring that no matter how many control points you put, it does not slow down the system to any meaningful degree. As you can see here, the resulting mask is more precise and the adjustment affects the background much less. So that was using multiple control points. Let's move on to the next tip. The second tip is to refine the mask. If the mask you've created is not precise enough, you might not know that there are actually sliders you can use to make your mask even better. To demonstrate this, let's once again return to this boat image. I've placed three control points to mask the boat. Predictably, as I have not put care on the size of the circles, the result is poor. The adjustment is spilling over the background. Thankfully, I can use the Luma and Chroma slider to refine the mask. Moving the Chroma slider adjusts the tolerance for color. To make the mask more precise, I'll move the chroma slider to maximum, ensuring that it prioritizes the brown color of the boat when creating the mask. Moving the luma slider adjusts the tolerance for brightness. I'll increase this as well to ensure that a high tolerance is placed on the shadows and not the midtones. There, a more precise mask. As you can see, the adjustments now affect mostly just the subject and very little of the background. So that is refining the mask. Let's move on to the next tip. The third tip to help you get a more precise mask is to use negative control points. To demonstrate this, let's work with this image. Once again, we have an imprecise mask spilling over the background. We could of course make the circle smaller or refine the mask as described in tip one and two. However, another option is to use negative control points, which is used to protect an area from adjustment or erase from a mask, whichever way you want to look at it. To use a negative control point, simply press the Alt or Option button when adding a mask. A negative sign will be shown, indicating that the mask is indeed a negative control point add the control point on areas of mask spillover. As you can see, the mask is now more precise. Let's move on to the number four tip. The fourth tip is to combine mask types. You might not know if you're new to DxO that you can combine the control point and the control line to form more complicated mask. This is especially useful for landscapes. In this example, not only is the boat in shadow, but so is the entire lower half of this image. You could use multiple control points exclusively, but that might take too much work. A better alternative would be to just use the control line for the bottom part of the image while retaining the control point for the boat. You can even use a negative control line to protect the unshadowed mask areas from being affected. So that was combining mask types. Now let's move on to the fifth tip, 
which is to reverse the control point mask. One great thing about control points is the mask can be reversed. Simply right click on the layer and click invert mask. This is really useful to add focus on a subject through a vignette or a background blur. The sixth tip is to use black and white masks. When using control points by default with its colored overlay, it might not be so easy to see exactly which parts have been included or excluded from the mask. That's not a good thing when you're aiming for precision. If that is an issue for you, simply switch to a black and white mask by selecting the corresponding option. There, it's a night and day difference to visually inspect the mask and distinguish masked from unmasked areas. So there you have it, six control point tips to ensure the perfect mask and outstanding local adjustment edits with DxO Photo Lab 7. I hope you found this video helpful and will save you hours of trial and error. Do let me know your own masking tips to get even better edits with DxO Photo Lab 7. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.